Welcome to DaVinci Technologies, where we're going to be discussing today about the Buffalo High Performance NAS, aka Network Attached Storage. This is the LS710D, which is about a 4 terabyte NAS. As you can see, it's got about 2.5 multi gigabyte uh, Ethernet uh, port on it, as well as give you the option for streaming video with your music, photos, and TV. It's definitely compatible with your Apple MacBooks as well, along with a bundle with the Nova backup for your PC. Now I can definitely tell you the Ethernet cable is about as thin as uh, paper so it is a little bit different than your traditional rounded uh, cable. You definitely got your standard you know, power supply that you would definitely want to use with it. Um, don't try to interchange this with anything because it may not work but you definitely want to make sure that you use and uh, see that all your components are there. Most well, definitely always read the instruction manual, the RITFM. Uh, so what, what they say um, or RTFM uh, read the manual but some people like to say it's other words you know into that but as you're looking through this uh, you want to definitely take your time and taking the device out because if not it is possible that you could just slide this out too fast and could possibly break it now as you can see it's kind of uh, individually wrapped uh, you know here of course make sure it's protected and everything uh, just make sure to get rid of the uh, plastic around it make sure you don't have that near any kids or let them you know get a hold to any of those components um, now it is a little bit smaller than what I thought it was going to be um, I thought it was going to be a little bit bigger from the pictures that I was looking at online but it's almost about the size of a book you can put in a bookshelf uh, it's got like a two buttons or two um, lights on there uh, for your power and everything and another light uh, you also got your reset uh, button on the back as well as like your fan you know to get rid of the heat uh, reset button up there if you need to reset it uh, you also have your on and off switch as well uh, you also have your USB 2.0 as well as your regular USB and then you also have your NIC port uh, there as well along with the lock if you're using any kind of Kingston device and the little um, hole down there is basically for to wrap your power cable around into it um, so that way it won't actually pull out if you uh, had it. Now I went ahead and bought uh, for an additional computer some additional um, uh, hard drives that uh, I was going to put into a server. Um, now when I was buying this online I, mean, I didn't actually need these for this LS710D. I just went ahead and just uh, picked them up for another project but I'm I'm just going to go ahead and open it up and show you what I got here. Um, now, oftentimes they send you a little, you know, coupons and stuff like that in the mail off of your next purchases as well as with your different types of warranty that you may have with it. As you can see, the hard drive is kind of floated a little bit with the cardboard that you have in there along with some anti-static paper that you have wrapped around it. So you want to make sure that you use that or, or can keep that in the event if you need to store this uh, for any other purposes. Now, this, um, I prefer the SSDs. Uh, these are more, like I said, for your uh, desktop computers. Uh, if you want, you know, just have some extra drives on hand. And I bought two of them, so I have a total of like, um, actually, I have a total of about 12 terabytes. One for uh, the... Um, uh, the NAS and then two for the PC. Now, pulling along into the console, once you start to get this plugged up and then attached to your network, you can see you have all different kinds of settings that you have in here. So, you definitely want to go to their site and um, download this according to the paperwork. So, you may want to make sure that you download the appropriate software depending on the type of system that you have. Now, you got the user manuals on there whether it's in HTML or PDF quick setup uh, guide as long as I'm um, as well as with the uh, navigator 2 uh, for Windows that's what you're going to be looking for so you definitely want to make sure you download that and also accept the software license agreement if you choose to read that uh, you can definitely pause the video and get through that if you want but once you um, get that taken care of there of course you have to scroll down with any license agreement Go ahead and click that OK there. Make sure that checkbox is checked. So we're going to go ahead and see if we can download the software to kind of give you all a visual of what we have here. Now, once you do that, of course, it's going to be a compressed file. You basically just right click it and uh, you go to the extract all and point it to wherever that you want to save that 
on your PC. Most of the time, if you save it, um, you can save it to your desktop or to your downloads, whichever you prefer. I did mine to the download, so I can easily just go over to it and take a look at that. Now, it will automatically open up. Of course, um, unzip. You just click on it and go into your nav and uh, your NAS nav install.exe file that's located there. And uh, you can go in here and as well as see all your other files uh, too. You're also run the application. I uh, kept the other window open so that you can see it. Once you get to installing it, you'll see that your Buffalo NAS uh, is, uh, application is installed there. We're just going to open up this menu here. This is so that you can see your device out there. You can also browse as well on that and just uh, look at the folders that you have. So I created some folder uh, types in here as well. So you can see um, now it automatically has one folder on there, but you can create your other ones, uh, create them in any way you like. Just make sure you keep up with what you're creating and who you give access to. Going through the menu, you want to make sure you set the appropriate time zone. The time zone is going to be very important so that your server knows, or sorry, your server, but your NAS the storage knows, you know, exactly what time zone is in any event. If there's these many backup options, um, everything will be within the same uh, time zone. Now, it will take a little bit of time once you get to configuring and start saving. You're going to notice it's going to take just a little bit longer, which is perfectly fine. Just wait a little bit uh, and set that so that we can go ahead and click the next button. So we're going to go ahead and wait for that to show up here. All right. So if you want, you can set your uh, proxy server there. If you want to just read through the information on how you want that to communicate. I didn't set mine up went ahead and did it for the central time zone based on where I'm located go ahead and click next and that was the only thing that I didn't um, like about it is you know sometimes it would take a little bit longer to get through some parts of the menu but it's better than saving the files locally on your computer because you are able to save like a lot of space And we keep spinning and spinning and spinning. All right. So I went back and I'm going to go back through it again. Just to make sure nothing locked up on me there. And then click next. Okay, there we go. So now we have, it's going to be applying the settings there. So that should move pretty quick. All right. So it looks like that went through. So we're going to go ahead and uh, click OK there. So now it gives you the path for um, your Windows computer. If you hit the, the Windows key and R for Windows and type that path in, or you can do the wind or the command or the uh, the command key and K on Mac and just swap the, uh, the backslashes around for the forward slashes and do the LS710 DAD7. Now that's going to be standard when you're setting up. You can change the name of your NAS to whatever you want. I just left mine's. For the default just for tutorial purposes so you're able to see it and if you want you can copy it and just paste it down in there um, it should most definitely go through I kind of had mine pre set up before doing the video but once you do it you'll get to this menu here where you're able to see the management interface you can do your email notifications uh, if you want to send you emails if something happened um, so you can look through those settings you have your backup settings uh, so that way you can look at the time machine for your macbooks and direct copies for usbs you plug into it as well as your ip address information if you want to set all that up in snmp the applications this is more for your dlnas and your um like your plex media servers as well as your cloud storage uh, auto syncing there and you also have the drives and USB devices and stuff like that. Now, um, as you're looking through your screen, I'm sure you're going to see like a lot more information there. But just like, listen, and subscribe to the channel. We'll definitely get some more demos on here so that you all can walk through the information with me. And especially when, as we're, you know, buying new devices and testing them out with clients, you all are able to see it. And just kind of go through it with me and get a slight tutorial that should you ever you know purchase this or you're just in interested in technology we have that information readily available there for you